Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the hypothalamus. This hypothalamus is an important organ though it is very small but it has an extensive functions which we are going to see in today's lecture. Coming to this lecture series, we are discussing the CNS lecture wherein under the higher functions we are going to see about the hypothalamus. So coming to the learning objectives of this particular lecture, we are going to see about the divisions of the hypothalamic nuclei, how are they divided and finally what are all the important functions of the hypothalamus. So first coming to the divisions of the hypothalamus, we will be seeing them in two views, one is the sagittal view, another one is the coronal view. So first coming to the sagittal view, this is the diagram and as you can see here, there are basically two groups of nuclei. One is called as the anterior group because they are located anteriorly. Another one is called as the posterior group. This is the anterior group and behind there is a posterior group in the hypothalamus. So in the anterior group, we have to understand how the nucleus are placed. We have to remember one important structure which is located in the anterior part of the hypothalamus that is just below the anterior part of the hypothalamus that is called as the optic chiasma. This is nothing but the crossing of the optic tract. Whenever the optic tract is crossing over, that area is called as optic chiasma. Since the nuclei which is just above in the anterior group are located very near to the optic chiasma, they have several names which is related to the optic system. So that is called as a supraoptic. As you can see here, it is just located above the optic chiasma. That is supraoptic. And one is located just in front of the optic chiasma. Considering the location, that is called as preoptic. Then in between these two nuclei, one important nuclei is present which is called as a suprachiasmatic, suprachiasmatic nucleus. So we have the supraoptic, preoptic and suprachiasmatic nuclei. Other than that, we have one more important nuclei which is bigger in size that is called as the paraventricular nuclei, that is called as the paraventricular nuclei. And in the anterior group, as the name suggests, it's the one nucleus is located which is called as the anterior hypothalamus itself, anterior hypothalamic nuclei. Then very similar to the anterior hypothalamic nuclei, on the posterior side, we have the posterior hypothalamic nuclei. Other than this, we have two medial group of nuclei. One is the dorsomedial, another one is the ventromedial. So one group is dorsomedial and another group is ventromedial. And one more important nuclei we have in the posterior group, which is called as mammillary body. In our previous lecture of limbic system also, we saw that the limbic connections are going through the mammillothalamic tract to the thalamus. It receives it from the hippocampus and gives it to the, from the hypothalamus, it gives it to the thalamus. So this mammillary body we have already discussed, which is present in the posterior group. And one more important nuclei is present, which is called as the arcuate nuclei. So these are the nuclear divisions between the anterior and the posterior group. Other than this, which is not shown in this view, but it is very important is the lateral hypothalamus. So one group is anterior group, another group is posterior group, and we have a bigger nucleus, which is called as lateral hypothalamus. Now coming to the coronal view, here as you can see here, it is mentioned coronal view. In the coronal view, we are not going to see all the nuclei, we are going to see the missed nuclei. The most important one, a larger portion here is the lateral hypothalamus. This is lateral hypothalamus and surrounding the ventricular region, we have something called as periventricular zone or periventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus. So these are the important nuclei and other nuclei we have marked here is dorsomedial and ventromedial and arcuate nuclei. Here is the optic tract and in the previous sagittal section, we saw most of them with relation to, the, to that of the optic tract. So now coming to the most important functions, we will come back to all this nuclei once we discuss the function, then we will try to summarize what is the function of each of the nuclei. So coming to the vegetative and endocrine functions and another group of functions we will be discussing is the behavioral functions. So coming to the vegetative functions, it is involved predominantly in cardiovascular regulation. So we have to know which particular nuclear group is involved in cardiovascular reg regulation. So one group that is involved is the posterior group as well as the lateral group. The posterior and lateral group. They are involved in increasing the BP and increasing the heart rate. As all of us know, it is considered as the head ganglion of the CNS. So it is involved in autonomic control. So that is done with the help of posterior and lateral to increase the BP and increase the heart rate. Then one more opposite nucleus which is located in the anterior group. Preoptic we saw it in the anterior group. It is going to decrease the BP and decrease the heart rate. And coming to the gastrointestinal regulation, it will cause both increase in appetite also and satiety also. Now we have to remember what is the particular nuclei involved. I will just give a mnemonic for this. 
so all of us whenever we are hungry what we do we tend to grab it from our lateral side like we tend to extend our arm grab the food and eat it so the lateral nuclei or the grabbing behavior happens in the lateral side just for a mnemonic so we grab the food and eat it whenever we feel thirst also we drink the water from the lateral take it from the lateral side and drink it so the lateral nuclei is involved in appetite so now we have taken the food so we feel always feel that the there is filling of the stomach and it gives a satiety feeling satiety means fullness of stomach or quenching of the thirst both happens in the medial side so just remember for a mnemonic whenever we drink water what is happening we are feeling satiety in the medial portion so this ventromedial group is involved in satiety function then coming to the circadian rhythm again the circadian rhythm we will discuss in the sleep cycle also it is done with the help of a master clock which is called as suprachiasmatic nucleus in which group it is located it is located in the anterior group that is the master clock which regulates the 24 hour cycle in the body like with the 24 hour cycle period which is destined for us it is maintained by the suprachiasmatic nucleus now coming to the other functions it is involved in body regulation also the anterior group is called as the anti rise group so whenever there is an increase in body temperature what we have to do we have to sweat it out so the anterior part of the hypothalamus is involved in this function so it, this causes sweating and in the posterior group there is a center called as anti fall so whenever the temperature is falling we don't want to excessive heat to dissipate from the body so it is involved in conservation of heat it is involved in conservation of heat and coming to the body water regulation body water regulation i have already told you one nuclei which is the lateral nuclei which is involved in hunger as well as thirst so thirst center is located in the lateral group then there is another nucleus which we will study in the endocrine physiology also which is called as supra optic nucleus which produces the adh what is this adh is nothing but an anti diuretic hormone so this is increasing the thirst mechanisms and help us to intake water and this is helping us to conserve water by reducing the elimination by the kidneys so other than this the endocrine functions which we are not going to discuss in detail in today's class but again in the endocrine physiology we will be seeing all this nuclei the three nuclei involved are arcuate supra optic paraventricular these are the three most important nucleus which we will be seeing in the endocrine physiology and they will be producing various hormones of anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary now coming to the behavioral functions the behavioral function also can be remembered easily with our previous mnemonic. So whenever we are hungry, what we tend to do, we tend to get agitated and we are in a rage and fighting. Immediately we want food. So we will be in that kind of state. So the lateral hypothalamus is involved in rage and fighting. So just remember whenever you get angry, we get totally pissed off. So that is done with the help of lateral hypothalamus. In a similar manner, whenever we are having food or we are feeling calm, so that is done with the help of ventromedial. Don't think that it is taking food reduces the gives the calmness. It is a ventromedial nucleus. Other than that, also it gives the tranquility or the calmness to the person. Coming to the other nuclei, which is involved in fear and punishment. The fear and punishment is involved. The centers are present in the periventricular nuclei. It is present in the periventricular nuclei, which was surrounding the ventricular structure. So these are the endocrine, vegetative and behavioral functions of the hypothalamus. We have to remember all these functions and their important nuclei. But many of its functions we will study in detail when we discuss about body regulation or endocrine physiology. Because they are involved in the thirst mechanism, hunger mechanism, satiety and endocrine functions. So coming to the summary, let us try to summarize what are the functions of all the group of nuclei. So there are three nuclei which is involved in endocrine physiology which is the paraventricular supra optic and arcuate these are the three important nuclei which is involved in endocrine physiology coming to anterior hypothalamus anterior hypothalamus was anti rise function it was doing an anti rise function what was the opposite function it was done by the posterior hypothalamus it is done by the anti fall function it is doing the anti fall function now coming to the pre optic nuclei pre optic nuclei what it was doing it was reducing the bp as well as decreasing the heart rate the opposite action was done with the help of posterior hypothalamus which was increasing the BP and increasing the heart rate along with the help of lateral hypothalamus also. Then suprachiasmatic nucleus what is the function? It is a master clock. It is a master clock. Then coming to the mammillary body we saw it in the limbic system. It is involved in the limbic system. 
Then coming to the medial nuclei, medial nucleus are involved in hunger and satiety as well as tranquility. So coming to the behavioral functions, here we can discuss the behavioral functions. The lateral hypothalamus, it is involved in rage and fighting. Whereas the fear and punishment centers are located in the periventricular zone. So periventricular zone, we have the fear and punishment. So these are the most important nuclei group of the hypothalamus and their basic functions. I hope it's clear. Thank you for watching the video. If you like my content, share it to your friends who might also benefit from it. Thank you so much.